And now, Dakota Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, Duality. Well, Simon, this has got to be a proud day for you. You too, Dr. Bygott. I couldn't have done this without you. Not at all. Why, it was your own determination. Your own strength of will that brought about this transformation. Well, whoever's responsible, he's done a heck of a job. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just agree to share the curtain calls, shall we? Sounds good to me, Doc. Yes, I confess the sin of pride myself. When I look at you today, standing at the doorway to a brand new life, full of hope, full of the infinite possibilities a new lease on life gives a man, well, I just can't believe how far you've come. The difference between the Simon Radford before me and the... Oh, please, Doc, don't remind me. I can't undo the past, but I'm not going to waste any more of my life dwelling on it either. I think that's wise. You've got too much to offer the world, Simon. I wish you the best of luck. Thanks, Doc. Thanks for everything. Geez, would you believe I'm actually going to miss you? Well, you're not going to have too much of a chance just yet. I want to see you twice a week during the adjustment period. We'll cut it back after that as we see how the treatments hold. But I think we've made a remarkable breakthrough here, and I hope it helps others as much as it's helped you. Me too, Doc. Me too. See you soon, and thanks again. Excuse me there, young fella. I seem to be lost. Is this the Henderson Building? No, sir. The Henderson Building is two blocks over. Oh, much obliged. Say, if this isn't the Henderson Building that you're leaving, just what is it? This? This is the Queen Street Lunatic Sanitarium for the Criminally Deranged. Have a good day. Where to, boss? As far away from here as you can get. Sounds like dinner was a dream. Don't start. Who's starting? Well, don't. I thought she seemed... nice. No, you didn't. I said not one word. You didn't have to. No, I didn't. Because you were so obviously disinterested, there wasn't any sport in it. You have no idea how difficult it is faking an interest in the sort of woman who would be interested in him. Him? Me. Pronoun trouble? Why would anyone want to spend an evening with someone as utterly vacuous as my alter ego? Three words. Bill Yun Air. Right. Which doesn't really leave us much to talk about. So why bother? You don't like the glamorous dinner dates any more than I like waiting in the car eating a donut. Why not ditch the act and get in some more quality time busting up bad guys? Our secret identities protect our friends and families from retribution at the hands of our enemies. They're as much a part of what we do as our masks, even if they're painfully dull at times. I understand. Besides, I bet your donut was a much better conversationalist. Judge for yourself. Yours is in the left-hand compartment with your grapple gun. Chocolate. My favorite. Sweets for the grouchy. Thanks, Kit. By the way, where are we going? Australia. What? The furthest place I could think of. I figured I'd ask when we got to San Francisco. Let's just try the underground lair, shall we? Sure thing. Hold on. On the subject of secret identities, could you make it less obvious the limousine has an engine nearly as powerful as the Pandamobiles? I could, but it would be less fun. Oh, by the way, a message came over the wireless teletype while you were snacking with her ladyship. It's from MMK, whoever that is. MMK? Myron McKellar. He's an orderly at the Queen Street Lunatic Sanitarium for the Criminally Deranged. I approached him a few months ago about acting as our agent there. What was the message? Uh, Simon Radford released this morning. Apparently cured. Thought you should know. Simon Radford? Cured? Impossible! Preposterous! Thank you! Who's Simon Radford? Hmm? Oh, I put him away before you became my sidekick. You probably only remember him by the name the papers gave him. The Electric Eel. The Electric Eel? Are you funning me? The supervillain with all the electrical powers? That's the one. I was lucky to capture him the first time. If he begins his reign of terror anew, there's no telling what could happen. I can't believe he was released. Shocking. 
I'm going to let you get away with that one because you gave me a donut. <laughs> I've got to talk to McKellar. Step on it, Kit. Music to my ears. Okay, here's what I don't understand. This Simon Radford has electric powers, right? He can disrupt electrical devices, stun a man with a touch, and throw a limited number of lightning bolts before he needs to recharge. Hmm. So that's the electric part. Does he have any eel powers? You're the flying squirrel. Do you have any squirrel powers? Maybe I do, mister. <laughs> like burrowing or hibernating? <laughs> For all you know, I've got a thousand walnuts hidden right in this car. I think I would notice something like that. You? If I hadn't tipped you off, you'd have never found that chocolate donut. <laughs> Kit Baxter, behave yourself. <laughs> yes, boss. Extra, extra, read all about it. Millions stolen in a mysterious bank heist. Extra. Read all about it. Two guards killed in daring securities caper. Only in the Sentinel. Sentinel Morning Edition. Alarm fails to sound as millions in gemstones stolen. Mysterious blackouts continue. Powers officials baffled. Read all about it. Extra, extra. Armored car melted open. Four guards brutally killed. Extra. Red Panda, there's another report of an armored car robbery. Same ammo as the last one? Exactly. Truck melted open. The guards inside were the only witnesses, and none of them survived the attack. What are we dealing with here? I've been through the case files backwards. There's no known player on the board with heat powers sufficient to the task. Mm, what about Lava Lady? Serving eight years in Saskatchewan. Ouch. So we've got a new supervillain on our hands. Or an old dog who's learned new tricks. What do you mean? Look at the size of the unsolved cases file. Almost all of these crimes were committed after Simon Radford was released from the sanitarium. But none of these crimes fit the electric eels ammo. He was shock and run, throw a few thunderbolts at the cops, not real sophisticated. Right. But these first few crimes, uh, bank lights blacked out, alarms failed to sound, small locks blown open, all within the scope of the electric eel's known powers. But not his M.O. at all. Granted. Then, the Maximilian Gemstones caper. Some of the largest and most perfect gemstones in the world disappeared. Two days later, these new attacks began. Steel vaults melted open, armored cars attacked, millions in cash and negotiables taken in a matter of weeks, with no living witnesses. I don't see the connection. None of the stolen gems have turned up in the underground market, which suggests they might have been taken for another purpose. Such as? Such as focusing Simon Radford's electrical powers into intense beams of raw energy, making him capable of these most recent crimes. Is that possible? Possible, yes, but very expensive. Radford would have to pull a few set-up jobs to get the capital together first, which it appears he might have done. But, boss, it's too fantastic. Is it? What about these mysterious blackouts? Massive power drains shorting out the whole system at regular intervals. Could the electric eel absorb that much power? As near as I can estimate, his main limitation was his own fear. He never dared to test the limits of his endurance... Or to kill. You think he's changed that much? Why? I don't know. But if he has, there's no telling where he might strike next. But why? If all these crimes were committed by the same man, he'd have more than enough money to disappear forever. Why keep stealing? What could he spend it on? You'd be surprised. What does that mean? The roots of my family fortune go back a long time, Kit. My great-grandfather could have sat in his laurels his entire life and still had more money than his descendants could have spent in a hundred years. And yet he spent his entire life in the pursuit of more. As did his son. And his son, my father. Sure. But they weren't robbing armored cars. They made it honestly. No completely honest man ever made the kind of money I'm talking about. They may have never committed a crime, but... But what? In a way, the criminals we fight are more honest. At least they make no bones about it. They don't hide their sins behind a mantle of respectability. Great acts of cruelty were committed by men I knew to be kind. All in the name of a little more money. And never once did they ask themselves what they needed it for. I wish you wouldn't skimp on the details. I don't want you to look at me differently. 
You really think that's possible, don't you? You're the Red Panda. Yes, because the only son of their house was so spoiled, there was nothing left for him to do but become someone else. Because they finally made so much money, I could fritter it away, atoning for their sins. Is that what you do? Does it matter? Maybe I do it because it's what I do, and maybe that's good enough for Simon Radford. I steal, therefore I am. It might be just that simple. And if it isn't, what if he really is cured, trying to start a new life? The last thing he needs is to find himself face to face with a bright red mask with spooky blank eyeballs. I hadn't thought of that. The pressure of an interrogation could cause him to relapse. All right, we could have two superpowered loons on our hands. In the meantime, we've still got this rash of robbery homicides and no clues of any kind. This fiend has got to be stopped. So we keep working the Radford angle. I'll do a little old-fashioned surveillance. You test your theory that all these unsolved cases are linked, and try to piece together what his next move might be. Good thinking, Kit. And if Simon Radford has changed for the worse, not the better, then the electric eel will answer to the Red Panda. <laughs> You are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Dakota Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. Ah, Kit, I'm glad you're back. Me too. My feet are killing me, and I've never been so bored. I've got news. Me too. What's yours? The residual energy signatures in the armored car attacks exactly match the known power frequencies of the electric eel. Simon Radford is guilty. What's your news? Simon Radford is innocent. Kid! I mean it, boss. I've been following the man for five days. He's got a job in a fix-it shop and an apartment a few blocks away. He walks to work, eats at a lunch counter across the street, closes up shop, works late, and walks home. I took an old radio into the shop... He was polite, mild-mannered. He fixed it when he said he would, and he charged me less than his estimate. I don't know who our villain on a spree is, but he's not Simon Radford. Well, the spree's been quiet this week, or you'd have seen firsthand that you're wrong. Are you sure it's just quiet? Maybe whoever it is has decided to quit while he's ahead. I don't think so. I know the type. It's the eel, all right, and he's building up to something. You say he works in a fix-it shop. Sure, a nice one. They can fix just about anything you care to name. And the boss there seems to think a lot of Radford. Says he's a whiz. I'm sure. Simon Radford was once a brilliant inventor. That's what he was doing when the accident that gave him his electrical powers happened. If he works late, he might be pursuing his own special projects. Did he take any materials home with him? Mm, He had parcels sometimes. What are you driving at? If the electric eel has used the Maximilian gemstones to augment his abilities, and if he has set up a system to drain the city's power supply for his own purposes, we might find the evidence we need in that shop. Boss, I'm telling you, there's no electric eel anymore. I looked in his eyes. There's no secret in there. If we're going to catch this bad guy, we need to lay off Simon Radford. I wish I could believe that, Kit. No. I know one place where we can settle this bet. The Queen Street Lunatic Sanitarium for the Criminally Deranged. Myron McKellar. What? You. You shouldn't be here. You have been sadly deficient in your duties, McKellar. I did all I could. I told you about Radford's release. You have to go. This isn't a game, Myron. When you act as an agent of the Red Panda, you must act fully and immediately. I can't do this. I could lose my job. I need more information on Simon Radford's treatment. And if I refuse? That would be... unpleasant. You can't intimidate me, Red Panda. You caught most of these psychopaths. You're a good guy. You're not going to rough me up. I caught most of these psychopaths, McKellar, because I'm not that worried about being good all the time. There's a madman on the loose, and it's up to me to stop him. If there's a chance it's the electric eel, I need to know... But you're right. I'm not going to rough you up. See? I thought I'd let her do it. Who? The black belt standing on the ceiling. What? Hi, sailor. What? We're uh, playing a little good cop, bad cop. It's my turn to be bad. In... in here. 
The files are in here. Smart boy. Come on, squirrel. Mm, shucks. Radford's file is in here. He was under the care of Dr. Bygot. Bygot? Dr. Cornelius Bygot? It uh, creeps me out when you do that. We met at a symposium years ago. We have a mutual interest in the hypnotic arts. Bygot eschewed the ancient secrets in favor of a scientific approach supported by a new formula he was trying to complete. Well, it's complete now. The sanitarium brought him in six months ago to start a new treatment program. Radford was his first patient. Here's the file. So, Bygot pumps his patients full of this juice of his and hypnotizes them into being good? That's more or less the size of it, yes. The fool! What is it? This file logs the treatments Bygot gave to Radford. The doctor was concentrating his efforts entirely on supporting the innocent side of Radford's personality, trying to reshape him into the man he was before the accident that gave him his powers. What's wrong with that? He completely ignored the existence of the electric eel's own identity, his own personality. He made Simon Radford strong enough to function independently, but the eel is almost certainly still in there somewhere. What are you saying? I'm not a doctor, Myron, but I am a master hypnotist, and I know a little something about... duality... There's a very good chance that Dr. Bygot has succeeded in nothing but splitting the two aspects of his patient's personality completely. He created a Simon Radford who is completely good, a respectable citizen looking for a fresh start. With no dark secrets in his eyes. Exactly. He might even be unaware of his other aspects' evil deeds. I don't understand. I think I do. The leftovers that didn't make it into Simon Radford are now a completely independent electric eel, free of Simon Radford's reluctance to kill. And his fears of testing the limits of his powers. Left entirely to his own devices, the electric eel personality would want all the power he could get his hands on. Freed of doubts, his ambition would be limitless. Myron, I've got to talk to Dr. Bygot. Where is he? In his office. This way. Nothing personal, guys, but I've got to save my job. When we see the doc, I'm going to tell him you threatened me. We did threaten you. Which should make the story easy to remember. Here's his office. Doctor, I'm really sorry to intrude, but... Good gosh! Dr. Bygot! He looks like... Like he's been hit by lightning. Red Panda, is he? Yes, Squirrel. Dr. Bygot is dead. And the last appointment in his book was an hour ago... With Simon Radford! Is that the fix-it shop where Radford works? That's the one. Is there a back door into the workshop? Down the alley. Follow me. And thanks for not saying I told you so. Why would I? Well, you were right about him all along. We were both right. I said the electric eel was behind these crimes. You said Radford was not the eel anymore. And you were right. Unfortunately, they're still in the same body... Is this the door? That's the one. It's unlocked. Come on. Boss! I see him, Squirrel. It's a man who owns a shop. He's been attacked, too. Yes, but I think he's still breathing. Can you hear me? What happened? Found his equipment. He... he went mad. Attacked me. Radford? Yes. Mm. Took... took everything away. In the truck. Did he say what he was doing? His plan? No. Just laughed and... No. No. Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls? I'll call a doctor. Don't bother, Kit. He's dead. Oh, boss, it's awful. The electric eel must be ready to strike. He's eliminating any connection to Simon Radford. Niagara Falls. The power-generating station at Niagara Falls. If the electric eel were to absorb that much power, we'd never be able to stop him. He's got an hour's head start on us at least. And we've got the Pandamobile. Let's get back to the lair and burn some rubber, squirrel. Oh, boy, are you ever in for a ride, mister. <laughs> Just a few more adjustments to my equipment, and... Yes! Yes, that's done it! Now the power regulation matrix is fed directly by the output of the hydroelectric dam. Millions of tons of water, driving mighty turbines, creating more power than I could have ever dreamed of. All for me! <laughs> Not so fast, Electric Eel! The Red Panda! Here? 
already? That's right, you snake in the grass. And I'll teach you to fool the flying squirrel. And you brought your little friend for me to play with, too. Perfect. Oh, I thought I'd have time to destroy this whole miserable little town before you got here, masked man. I guess I'll get to kill you first. If you're very lucky, I might let you live just long enough to see these people suffer. <laughs> There's been enough suffering, Eel. The guards in the banks and armored cars. Dr. Bygott and Radford's employer. So you know about that? Not to mention the workers you've killed here. You'll pay for these crimes, Radford. Radford is gone, you fool. And with him are gone all his pathetic doubts, his fears, the hesitancy that kept me from fulfilling my destiny to be the master of this world. All will tremble before the awesome might of the electric eel. You're totally mad. Who's going to stop me? You? First, you'll have to come out of the shadows. Come out here where I can see you. Oh, you'll see us, eel. You'll see dozens of us. You won't know where the real red panda and flying squirrel are, but each of the dozens of illusions your mind will create will move and fight independently of one another. You will feel each blow as if it were real, because your mind will tell you that you do. Bring it on. As you wish. There you are. <laughs> You're losing your touch, Red Panda. I can only see one of you and one of the girl. Your sitting ducks. No! Boss, what's happening? By God's drug therapy must be preventing my hypnotic powers from working. Get to cover, squirrel. No! <laughs> Yes, you cowards, run and hide. None can stand before my augmented powers. And when I have used this device to capture the hydroelectric power of these mighty falls, I will be without equal. Whole armies will fall before me. The power will grow within me, become self-perpetuating like the sun. I will be as a god on earth. <laughs> oh, boss! We gotta do something! <laughs> Can we hit him with a knockout gas? He's out of range. No. <laughs> I'll draw his fire left. You try and get close enough to take him out. Use explosives. Use anything. On my mark. No. You'll be killed. <laughs> if we don't stop him before he completes the power transfer, we're as good as dead anyway. Now. Boss. He strapped himself into the machine. It's too late. Yes, masked meddlers. The power is mine. <laughs> <laughs> so bright. The heat driving me back. Use your boomerangs. Aim for that control panel. Hurry. I got it. No, you little fool. What have you done? The power. Too much power. Too fast to absorb. Consuming me. No. 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 Are you all right? I'm over here, boss. Thank heavens. Are you... Oh, my ears are ringing something fierce, but I'm okay. Hey, where's the electric eel? There's no trace of him. The damage to the control panel must have increased the energy flow from the dam. It was more than he could absorb. Do you think I killed him? It would have happened sooner or later, Kit. Without the voice of caution of his alter ego to hold him back, his lust for power would have driven him to the same end. But he very well might have killed both of us and the population of the town of Niagara Falls in the process. Simon Radford and the electric eel were part of each other. When they were forced apart, the madness destroyed them both. Maybe you and I need that same... What did you call it? Duality? That's the ticket. And by you and I, you mean me. You have been pretty hard on a certain wealthy young gad about lately. Maybe you're right, Squirrel. Balance in all things. Maybe I need to take more of an interest in my secret identity. Right. I guess that means more painfully dull dinner dates with glamorous young socialites. Hang on a minute. Seems like quite a sacrifice, but if that's what I have to do... Wait, 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 wait. I thought of a better moral for the story. <laughs> hey, come back here. Hey! 
Ah, heck. And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda. This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, Episode 11, Duality, was written and directed by Greg Taylor with original music by Andrea Lyons and featured the vocal talents of Andrew Mazzetti, Scott Moyle, Brian Vaughn, Shannon Arnold, Clarissa Renetta Landon, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night.